Okay. 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 The Phillies win 4 nothing. Now, we lost game one of this series in, in 10 innings yesterday, and it was atrocious, and we couldn't hit at all. Today, we have some nice power hitting, and we have some really fantastic pitching as well with Jared Eikhoff on the mound. He was truly remarkable today. He goes seven innings, allowed two hits, zero earned runs in this shutout. He walked one, had six strikeouts and 86 pitches. There's no doubt in my mind that this guy could have went out and pitched the eighth inning, and maybe even the ninth if he really wanted to. I mean, he looked that great, and there were no signs signs whatsoever of him slowing down, but Gabe Ka Kapler elected to, to pull him out of the game when his spot in the lineup came up, and I, I get it, I get it. He was so special, though. He was establishing the strike zone, getting in there early, getting the inside part of the plate, making pitches happen. Location was perfect. The off-speed was tremendous, and everything he's been through, the adversity that Jared Eikhoff has faced, it's insane, and he's came back. He's thanking all of his family. He's thanking all of his loved ones, saying he couldn't do this without them, and then he's thanking JT Real Mucho because him and JT were just on the same page today, dialed in, and what I love about it is he's so confident. He's pitching with so much confidence, so much swagger. He's calm on the mound, and he's executing, and he's looking really solid. I, I wouldn't have expected Jared Eikhoff to be pitching like this. Not that I, I, I expect him to be bad, but he is really, really shutting down some squads here. And this is not just today's game. Every single time he's been in a game, whether it was in the bullpen early before he got some starts, and now the last two starts, Jared Eikhoff has been phenomenal, and, and I love it. And he is a... Big, 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 big time factor on why the Phillies won this baseball game. All right. Another factor, like I said, was the power and, and hitting it with power today. And we established early a lead. And that was huge. JT Real Muto getting some payback, getting some revenge on his old squad. And in the bottom of the first, he hits it, hits it right over the fence. A beautiful dinger. And we take a one to nothing lead. Fourth inning, Franco, a solo shot of his own. Uh, who's your daddy? What's he do? He puts it over the fence as well. We're up two nothing after some solo shots. And in the bottom of the eighth, after Bryce Harper had batting gloves, no batting gloves, batting gloves, new bat, trying to get out of the slump, trying to get out of this this terrible funk that he's in right now he hits a moonshot 3,000 feet up in the air to outer space 3,000 feet up in the air and into the second deck this ball was destroyed it was murdered out of the ballpark it was awesome and hopefully this is something to get him going because he needs it. He gets his sixth home run of the year, and, and he really does need to get out of this slump. It's It's been pretty ugly. It's It hasn't been pretty whatsoever, and sometimes he just needs something like this to get himself into rhythm, and I love it, and it was awesome. And he, you could tell when he was around the bases and when he was celebrating back into the dugout doing his thing and doing his celebrations that he was happy, and, and he, he felt good when he was... <laughs> celebrating with his team and it felt good for him to kind of get back on track there after after a few games of um of ugliness when we did go to the bullpen so after Eikhoff came out it, it was still two nothing at this time in the eighth and Ramos came in and I was a little skeptical of that and he had oh two count so I said okay that's not too bad and he starts fooling around with it and that was the difference between Eikhoff and and Ramos tonight Eikhoff when he had a chance to put guys away bang put him away bang punch out or bang made him ground out because he did a lot of that too he forced some ground outs like a Jake like a Jake Arrieta type thing where he's making people you know, ground out and putting the balls in locations for them to not be able to to have a good swing on it but Ramos, 0-2 count, he starts to put it in the dirt or he's hitting the backstop and he's fooling around with the strike zone and they end up getting the hit and then there's a guy on and then Adam Morgan comes in and he walks a guy in the eighth and at this point it's only a 2 nothing game, keep in mind. But we end up getting out of it and then Nishak closes the door when it was 4 nothing because this all happened in the, in the top of the eighth and the bottom of the eighth is when Bryce hit the two-run moon shot. So this is how I feel, right? We got... We got some help. Right now, the score is 9-2 to two with the Mets and who are they playing? The Brewers. The Brewers are up. The Nats lost. The Braves lost. So we got some help throughout the division. We're 14-12 and 12 now. We have to win this series. You can't split or lose a series at home 
against the Miami Marlins. It might come down to who beats the Marlins the most out of the division at the end of the day. We have two games left, and I know we have to take it one game at a time. So tomorrow, Jake Arrieta on the mound, this is something that I, I, I need to focus on because he said a lot of things to the media last game, and he talked a lot of crap about his teammates not being there for him last game. Well, he's got a lot of pressure to perform tomorrow. I demand a great performance out of him because if you're going to talk the smack, that's fine. It's totally acceptable to me, but back it up, but back it up. And I want to see Jake Arrieta do that. And and speaking of Jake Arrieta, today was a rain delay. And I was wondering, how is this team going to come out and perform? Because one of the things Arietta was upset about was the team not being ready mentally after a rain delay. Well, today, they responded. And even Reese, after our, our last win, so not the last Miami game, but the game before that, said Jake Arietta's words really sank in there. Well, uh, okay, okay. Jorge, so I, this is just random, but Jorge Alfaro on the other squad, he, he's going to be the Phillies killer. He gets two hits today, and I even heard a couple boos. Something like, are we really booing Jorge Alfaro, really? Uh, come on, uh, is, is that to the point where, where we are at now? End of the day, it's a win. We're 14-12. and 12. Tomorrow's big. Tomorrow's big, and, and one thing that I want to talk about is Last game, when we lost in 10, you take a look at the middle of the lineup, and it was grossly horrendous. It was awful. It was pathetic. No one was getting in runs. Bryce Harper was up in a big moment, couldn't knock in McCutcheon. Reese Hoskins was up in a big moment, couldn't knock in McCutcheon. Today, look at who produced the runs. JT Romuto. Franco, who batted in the sixth hole today. Bryce Harper. Right? Take a look through the lineup. Hit, 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 hit. Now, we, we only had six hits, and Andrew McCutcheon's still struggling in that slump as he went 0 for 4. Sean Rodriguez didn't get a hit. There were a couple guys like that, that that weren't able to produce, but middle of the lineup guys, they executed and swung the bat well and, and got it, home runs in there, two solo shots and the, and the two run bombs. So a lot different from last night's game. Now, we still weren't insanely crushing the ball when it comes to the quantity of hits. But power came into play, and we had enough to get the job done against this team. Urini on the mound. He went seven. Allowed four hits, two earned runs, three walks, four Ks, well over 100 pitches. He's always so iffy with me. I, I don't like his style. I'll be honest with you. I, I really don't love him as as a pitcher, and, and it might be a little bit of, of his... I don't, I don't know. I, I, I just remember him coming after us at times and, and being a scumbag on the mound and throwing pitches at guys, and I, it just pisses me off sometimes. And I know last year he had trouble with, with throwing at people, and he just bothers me, bothers me. I'm happy. It seems right now I'm very flip-floppy. One game we win, one game we lose, one game we win, one game we lose. We got to find a rhythm. We're 26 games in. We need our guys to get going. It, it, it can't happen where we have four guys, five guys in a slump at the same time. And I'm pretty damn sure Gene Segura is supposed to be back for Saturday's game. So tomorrow's game, that's everything I've been hearing. Gene Segura potentially back in the lineup Saturday. Well, let's hope for that. Let's see what this lineup can do with him back in it because it is such a difference maker. And I would like to see Franco get back into that eighth hole. But I understand the logic. I will say that. I'll understand the logic because... You want to protect guys, and you want to make as as powerful as that that top of the lineup as it can be. You want it to make it as powerful as it can be. And, and lastly, lastly, I know I'm hopping all over the place here, but once I get going on my Phillies, I can talk all day long. Gabe Kapler, I mentioned this last game. He said I should not have brought Hector Neris, or not they shouldn't brought him in, but he should have pulled him at a certain time. Well, today he even talked about it a little bit more and said I had a gut feeling. And I didn't trust my gut feeling. And I love that. That's a growing moment out of your manager. Analytics, 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 analytics. That's what we go by. That's the Bible, which I disagree with. But he actually stated and admitted that he had a gut feeling to go out there and pull Hector Neris, and he did not do it. So that's just a learning moment. I talk about it with Ben Simmons. I talk about it with Brett Brown. Well, here we are with Gabe Kapler. He's not a manager that's been around for 500 years. This is a learning moment for him, and I'm proud. I'm proud for him to admit it, and I've actually did a complete 180 on Gabe Kapler from last year to this year. It's crazy how much I flip-flopped. 
But I just wanted to throw that out there because I think that is important for the future of this organization. So the Phillies get a shutout win. It's nice. They win 4 nothing. I demand the next two victories. I demand it. I demand it. I demand it. I demand it. And Jake Arrieta on the mound tomorrow. It will be interesting to see how he performs after talking to the media. Let me know your thoughts down below on this game. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.